Hi, it's Asha here, and welcome in this voiceover video process of drawing Jinx from League of Legends. The first part I want to walk you through is sketching, and this is the final result of the sketch. And this is how long it took me to do. It's already a lot by how much the app counted of my time working on the illustration, but I'm pretty sure it didn't add all my time that I just open the document and stared at it not knowing what to do or all the time I spent online researching or looking for references or trying to make stuff work. So I definitely spent double or even triple of the time that is shown there just on the sketch. To tell you a bit more about the process, I sketched it all on iPad and Procreate. So Procreate registers sort of a time-lapse video of me drawing, which is what you see now. I'm sketching loose at the beginning, trying to figure out the composition, how the artwork could work. My brief was to draw Jinx with one weapon, the minigun. This work was a commission and no doubt it was one of the most difficult commissions I ever accepted. And on top of all that, I decided to overcomplicate it myself and add the second weapon to the design. It was mainly because I couldn't figure out the composition without it, but all the time that I was drawing, I was thinking, how can I make it work with just one weapon? How can, how can I delete that other weapon so I don't have to draw it? But I decided to save time and energy in a little different way. So when looking for references of the weapon, I couldn't quite find the right references and I really spent hours just researching. I was lucky enough to find a 3D model of, um, I'm not sure if it's both weapons or just one, but let me show you how I used the reference. I took a few screenshots on my iPad of the model in the position that I thought it would suit my illustration and my idea well. Then I chose one of the screenshots and then imported it into Procreate. It took me a while to figure it out how to use it, but well, now I've learned so I can show you. To remove the background quickly, I went to the selection tool and chose automatic selection and just clicked a few times on the black background. It turned out white, which means the background was selected. And then I was able to clear that selection on my screenshot layer, which left me with a weapon without a background. To show you that there is no background, I changed the background color in Procreate. But there were some elements that didn't get removed because it was just a screenshot. So I went to the selection again and changed automatic to freehand and selected just the weapon. Then in the options, I chose copy and I was able to paste it into my illustration, make it bigger, smaller, adjust the angle just so it fits my idea and fits how I designed it in my illustration. After finding the right references, I debated in my head whether I should draw them freehand from reference or whether I should just trace over the shape. It wasn't an easy decision, especially because I knew I wanted to share the process on my Patreon and I was wondering whether this could be taken as an offense to art and to teaching. But um, there were a few arguments that convinced me to just trace over the shape of the weapon. First of all, I was running out of time to finish the commission. Secondly, I much overcomplicated the design for the budget that I assigned for this commission. So I was doing already extra work and spending much more time than I should have. Third argument was that I have not actually drawn weapons before and as much as I know how to copy exactly the references from the images that are in front of me, I knew that one small mistake in such a complex design could be really off-putting. And I think that last argument that decided whether I'll be tracing or just drawing freehand was the fact that I was commissioned this artwork traditionally on paper and not digitally. If this was a digital commission, I would feel really bad for, for just going the easy way and tracing over the shapes. But because it was a traditional one, I knew there is much more to the process than just drawing it. I had to redraw it again on paper, then redraw it again in ink, and then color it, and then make it look good. So there was so much ahead of me, and I already spent around five days on just this one sketch. And this is what I did in the end. I traced over the design of the weapon and I found the reference for another one. I traced over its shape and then I decided to move forward with my character, make it ready to be transferred onto paper. So I tried to get the anatomy right, all the details and anything that I needed for the sketch to look good. I have to admit that 
art is job for patient people. So there is part I didn't record here, which is how I transferred the digital sketch to paper because I did it on a light box. I'd rather do it in the darkness, which is pretty hard to record. So I printed the sketch one to one in size that I wanted it to be. And on top of printer paper, I placed the quality paper that I decided my illustration to be on. Interestingly enough, I have not used this paper before. And I don't quite think it's smart to experiment on such a serious job and that has so many details, but that's exactly what I did. After a few hours of tracing the sketch to paper, delicately and precisely with HB pencil, I went over all the lines again with ink, as you can see with Copic Multiliners. I'm trying to be accurate but also not overdo the lines because it's not the final inking. I will have to ink again and I was aware of that. So you can see I'm using not only one color but two. I'm using black and sepia color. I think that using sepia ink softens a little bit Copic markers that I use as skin tones and makes character more natural and vibrant. After the whole long process of inking, which I'm not gonna lie, was really long, I tried on the frame and made some marks to know the area which should be colored entirely. And then I finally started coloring. When I was only beginning to work with markers and they were all new to me, I didn't know how to predict how they behave, I would have one more step here before going into coloring. I'd definitely pull out a piece of paper and just check how they work. That's one. And two, I'd probably either sketch or print um, like a draft version of the line art and try on coloring it first, like really fast with draft colors just to see if they work. This would allow me to prevent some real tragedies. Not only all markers have different colors on different papers in different circumstances, they also differ quite significantly from the colors on their tops. So doing sort of a test coloring would help me massively, but with the artwork like this one where I was really running out of time and that had so many colorful details, I would probably have to spend a few days just trying to figure out the colors. So I decided to go with the flow and just use the colors the best I can, the way I think they could work. I also have some experience from working with the markers for quite a long time now, so I know my colors, I know a little bit how they behave on different papers. And this experience gives me confidence to do it straight away without running the tests. I always have a piece of paper on the side where I can test the marker just before putting a stroke on the paper, but I don't do the whole sketch colors anymore. But if you're, if you're a starting out artist and are really not certain and not confident in the colors you pick, I think that doing test colors is very beneficial. I start with coloring skin. Looking at the references, the character has quite a greyish tone of skin tone and I was trying to match it with my Copic markers. I used markers from R family like R triple or quadruple zero, E triple zero, E four zeros and some cooler grey tones. My method is to start from the lightest markers that I have and just build the colors gradually. It's sort of a safe method because I can always darken a color and cover it with a darker shade or just add up to it, but it's a marker. You can only layer them on top of each other, but you can't quite take it away from the paper. So this again is a very slow process for me. I'm not that much confident with my coloring to just go straight away to the darkest tone. I would be lying down. I just put layers and layers and see how it looks. Observe it all the time, try to mix colors as they're still wet. Flip from darker tones and brighter tones, blend them together and just see what it looks like. I have this favorite marker of mine which is um, V91 and probably V93 too, which I use for the shadows. This time the character's skin was supposed to be a bit more greyish so I mixed it with grey tones but I still used it uh, to indicate shadows. When coloring hair you can probably see me change colors at least four times. I really was terrified to just lay down the dark blue as the first layer of marker so I started off from such a faint color it was hardly visible and just for the next half an hour I was darkening, darkening and all stuck in one place. 
but that's something I really love about Copic markers. They're soft, they blend really nicely, and they can be lightweight and darkened. So if you think you used the wrong color, there are methods to fix and change it. There are methods to just darken and go over the color that you don't like and make it look better. I said it before, but maybe it's visible a little bit better right now. It is much easier to darken a color than lighten it. It's hardly possible. It is possible, not impossible, but it's really difficult to brighten a color or to brighten it nicely. So with, with the highlights on her, instead of painting everything over with flat dark color and then trying to figure out where I would put the highlights, I'm leaving the space uncolored. Either colored really lightly with that thing marker that I used as, a fir as the first one, or leaving paper white and not coloring it at all. If in the end I think I left too much for the highlights, I can always go back and darken that part to make the highlights, highlights a bit smaller. But layering white paints and trying to brighten with brighter markers, it's, it's much more difficult and looks much less effective. So even going in with vibrant and bold colors, I'm trying to be careful and leave some space for my hesitation. Another thing was that I actually spent much more time at the top than at the bottom. Once I figured out the method of coloring with the very careful experimentation, I could just go in with the colors and finish off the braids without too much of that. Also to mention one thing about the skin, I left the skin how well I thought it ni looks nice and works well, but it's, it doesn't mean I have finished. I can come back to it at any time and darken any parts or add any shadows or color reflections whenever I want. So throughout the illustration, I do usually jump a lot from area to area, try to make everything work together instead of finishing one part and moving to another which I also do very carefully, but I do come back sometimes. So when the video skips, you might see some improvement on skin, even though I'm definitely talking about improving hair or something else. So nothing's blocked out. You can always come back to the area that you think, oh, maybe it needs some more color or improvement right now, or you think it looks a bit unfinished. I didn't speak much about the paper that I'm using apart from mentioning that this is something new that I haven't used before, but I think this is an interesting moment to mention it. Again. <laughs> I ran out of my favorite paper that I've been using for years and I couldn't just go to the shop and buy it because they have discontinued production of it. It has changed, so I'm not even gonna mention what was it, but it's not the same. So having used the last sheet of that paper I went into a bit of a panic mode, honestly. I searched everything that I have and I couldn't find any spare sheet of paper. Even with my really messy folder of backup papers with some unfinished drawing on one side so I could always use the other side, but nothing felt like my old paper. So having faith in watercolor paper that I knew my favorite paper was, it was a hot pressed watercolor paper uh, with a smooth finish. And I've always been trying to find similar or better paper or just a similar one if not identical. And I've tried many so far. So there were a few brands like Strathmore that I excluded totally from my search. And there is many that I didn't try because this paper is very expensive. But being a bit in a rush and really needing paper because of this commission and not having any backup plan, I had to go to the shop and just choose something. There was a few choices on the shelf of smooth, hot pressed watercolor papers, 100% cotton because this is a cotton paper, but not all of them I was able to touch because they're sealed with packages and I can't look or touch them. I'm not sure if I want to spend $30 on just trying out any paper. So I limited my search to the ones that I could actually touch. This was one of it. I just trusted in it by touching it. Like, okay, I'm gonna try this one. I'm not sure how much it costed, around $20 probably for 12 small sheets of paper. That's a lot of money, right? It's not just some printer paper anymore. It's real investment, so you want the paper to work well. 
I know that it's a bit of hit or miss, but I had good hopes. And as I said at the beginning of the video, maybe with such a serious job, I shouldn't be really trying out as I go. I should have made some tests, see if the paper works well or it doesn't. But there was no time for it and I just decided to go with the flow. For the parts as skin or hair, there was nothing special happening. I just colored it as I felt, as I usually do. But coming to color the weapon, this is where real adventure began. In the video, you can see that I have a small piece of paper where I'm trying markers just before I place them on paper. I'm trying to mix colors because I wasn't really happy with standard colors and I decided to layer two colors on top of each other the, the way that after they mix, they produce the color that I like. As much as it looked fine on the test paper on a really small area, when I placed it on the actual drawing, first layer of the one marker V04 works fine, worked normal, nothing special happened. And when I put RV02 on top of it, it started producing some really interesting results. I was impressed at first, but then the marker started bleeding horribly around the edges outside of the lines where I, I didn't want it to go. And I started panicking a little bit, so all the strokes after that, I was a bit more careful trying to leave space from the line for the bleed, because I know it's gonna bleed. And I didn't color up to the line, I colored a little bit before the line, leaving that space for the bleed. I quickly realized that on this paper I can't do really much with markers because it's really hard to lie a flat color. I decided not to try any gradients, not to try any shading, but first flatten out the whole element in one color, which was literally two colors on top of each other, that produced one color as a result. and. I liked the color, I really loved the color, but I didn't like the effect that it was happening. It was really hard to predict and it looked a bit like a chemical reaction. Well, I had thoughts that everything is lost and that I have to start over, which was really terrifying. But I also decided not to give up until the end and see what everything looks like after the final steps. There is a lot that changes at the end of the illustration when I pull out pencil crayons. So there's always only as much as I can do with markers. Well, all I can say about the paper is that it has been a real challenge. I really love how the colors turned out because they're very vibrant and the paper has archival quality. So I'm pretty sure they won't fade for years to come. But as always with new things, there is a certain time that we need to put in to learn and experiment and to familiarize ourselves with the tool. So for the first time drawing on this paper, it was a love-hate relationship, honestly. Another thing that was coming through my mind was that, okay, the colors are really beautiful and vibrant, but do they work well together? So I spent a great deal of time trying to put some pink in the hair later or some blue from the hair onto weapons so that the colors are unified. After this challenging part that was coloring a weapon, I haven't encountered any more challenges. Not to say that anything after was easy to draw, it's just that this part stressed me out so much and produced so many unfortunate and unpredictable results. I thought I'm, I'm ready for whatever it is to come. Coloring the second weapon felt a little bit easier as I was just layering the grey colors and trying to make the material reflective. I flooded out the whole shape of the weapon with just one color and the second I used for shadows. This has made the weapon look very flat, but it was a good base. I have to admit, I really enjoyed the process of drawing this. It was oddly satisfying as the pieces were coming together. Even though it was a little bit of experiment for me and not something I have drawn before, sometimes even watching my own videos, I wonder how, how did I know where to put shadows or how did I know where to leave paper white when I was drawing? And I can't find a clear answer for this. I think the answer is lying in the way that I observe world. When looking at interesting materials, I always think how would I draw them and try to imagine the colors I'd use in different places. Maybe this allowed me to make decisions of making darker strokes of... Um, what would I even call it? Of shadow or leaving some... Um, wider 
parts are uh, it's, it's it is so difficult to explain just the way i painted this um, putting markers all in one direction and leaving the darker and lighter stripes i think that came from my earlier observations of metal and reflectiveness of it how the roundness of it is depicted in nature and it just stuck in my head i'm really surprised it worked in there but i was very happy with the result of this one because material reflects a lot of colors, I didn't want to be super accurate with what I was drawing but I added some blue from the hair and some pink from the other weapon and from the costume into the weapon as really light colors at the edges because I thought this would unify this grey, uninteresting item a little more with the full illustration. Okay, easy part now, blacking out the background. Yeah, it is rather very easy to do and I don't want to say too much and waste your time but the one tip I've learned that I could tell you is to thicken a bit the liner outside with a different tool than a Copic marker. So I'm using a brush tool but not too soft brush tool, it's like a hard brush tool and then blacking out all the rest with Copic marker. Sometimes I use Sharpies, sometimes I use Copics um, black or 110 black, I never saw the difference between the two and definitely do more than one layer so two layers should do a pretty decent black i'm doing it also very carefully and pulling strokes usually if i can in just one direction because there is a chance that they won't lie really nicely and flat on paper so if um, the strokes are gonna be visible later then you really want them to be tidy and nice rather than a mess and uneven when you're not controlling your lines sometimes you go over more times in one place than in another so that's all i can say about blacking out the background um it really made the illustration stand out and as i was blacking out the background i already saw what needs fixing what needs darkening where should i add some more details this step can never be a final step of the illustration it will always show something that needs fixing or improving um, maybe it's not visible in the video but it's worth to have a refill of whatever tool you're using so if i'm using a copic marker i don't want it to dry halfway and change it to a different tool because a black is not black every brand has their own black and every marker has its own black and i was refilling the marker a few times as i was painting because dry marker produces completely different results and not a nice one anyway next part and now my favorite part using pencil crayons to do what markers can't do so adding very delicate highlights shadows fixing the line art i absolutely love this process even though it's really long and it's probably taken me as much time as coloring whole illustration it's roughly coloring it again with a bit more details and a bit smaller tool because it's just a pencil crayon so my favorites to use are these crayons that I got probably when I was 8 years old a brand Jolly which are sort of a German brand or Austrian brand I got them from my parents that visited Austria when I was a child so I just always loved these crayons they're not too soft, not too hard, just perfect uh, but something more global brand that I'm also mixing right now in this process is Prismacolor they're much different but the set that I bought was called the manga set and it had around 20 something crayons that were soft and really vibrant colors and five harder crayons so some of them are rounded some are hexagonal and the hexagonal ones are much harder which are used for line art or harsher shadows yeah they're usually all dark they have a slightly different texture on paper too so maybe if you experiment and see which ones you like more the softer ones blend together beautifully and i absolutely love how vibrant their colors are i haven't seen any other crayons with such vibrant colors that cover paper really well the jolly crayons are a bit more transparent when i put white on top of pink the white won't be that white but with prismacolor their white is really strong so i absolutely love these crayons 
And you can see how just this white on that pink web one, it's bringing it so much out. It's helping the design so much. It gives this beautiful shine. I know I was saying to usually leave white of the paper if you want to do highlights, but if you can't do, this is one way to do it. And I couldn't do it with wet one because the markers weren't behaving how they should have. So for highlights, I'm just using the crayon. And again, like with various colors of markers, I'm trying to introduce them on the whole illustration and not just in certain parts. Or if I wanted to fix the weapon, I would fix the weapon and do nothing else. No, I'm definitely doing everything equally in all parts. So the crayon isn't off-putting and isn't looking odd. It just looks like part of it. I added a lot of pink in her, I added a lot of pink and blue on the other weapon. I used black crayon to fix the face details and eyes, which I would often do with a multi-liner too, but recently I'm liking this softer version of outline and doing line art with black crayon is also a very nice idea in my opinion. It is a little bit softer than if done with ink. Oh, and there's one more cool benefit of using crayons. Well, they can be erased. It's not like with markers or ink that once you put it on paper, you're done and you're done for good. And if you made a mistake, it's really problematic to go back a step. Most of the crayons can be erased a little bit. Obviously, these are rather oily crayons, so they're not easy to erase. Still be careful where you place your lines if you're gonna use them. But some slight mistakes or if you put too much of the crayon can be erased, so that's very beneficial. I very much like adding blush to cheeks. I'll give you a secret here. I'm not using a crayon because, as I said, it's oily and I can't always take it down or take it off. So if I don't like the blush that I did, with a crayon, I would pretty much have a problem. So only for blush, I'm using a different tool, which is my Nanodia pink pencil. And this one is 100% erasable. Perfect, but it doesn't come in too many colors. It's just the normal pencils. There's also blue and probably green, but I don't use them. I only ever use the pink for blush and for under sketches. So it has been a really long process of this illustration. I hope you found it helpful and that I shared with you some tips that I could think of as a bonus for people who, <laughs> who watched this video until the end. Hope you can enjoy the uh, beautiful picture that I took as a reference for the hand. Thank you for listening, have fun with your drawings, good luck and until next time!